Hello and welcome to another jungle tutorial and in this one we're going to look at the practices you should be using in order to not only win hard but win fast including how you can do this with even scaling champions but most importantly how using early game junglers to get these leads is vital in closing a game out as soon as possible. So if you like fast games, fast LP or just scaling up more quickly than Akali can dash from Nexus to Nexus, this video should keep you covered and also help you with your clash games this week if you're in EU West. All with fancy effects, motion blur and more coming up in 15 seconds. Now obviously your starting roots and power things are vital to how you approach the game so you're not really looking for the whole AFK farm thing that we looked at last week but I will be looking to do an end of season jungle roots video so make sure you have your notifications turned on and please do consider liking this video and subscribing if you enjoy the content as we are closing in quickly on 100k subs. Now during this introduction you've been seeing clips of early game ganks and skirmishes that results in leads for you and your team but let's break down an approach by a early game jungler with a focus on finishing the game by at least 20 minutes or forcing the enemy to surrender by 15 and for that we have a Rek'Sai vs Lee Sin both early game focused and then of course we can use these principles and apply them to a scaling champion like a Talia Okarthus and show you how you can still win the game by 15-20 minutes but averaging a kill a minute using that scaling to your advantage. Essentially beating the enemy team with shock and awe to the point they have no idea what happened and you walk away with all their LP. Now the reason for the popularity of the red side start, you know doing red raptors krugs in any particular order is that it gives you that level 3 and that's what the rex side does here and the whole point of being level 3 as an early game jungler is so that you can immediately look to gank. If you're doing red krugs raptors obviously you're going to look towards the mid lane more so and if you're doing red raptors krugs like a Talia would then you're definitely looking to go to the bottom lane. Just like we talked about in my so you want to be diamond video you need to assess the lane states, laners and junglers both of every lane so you know what your plan is going in. If you do not have a plan as an early game jungler you're going to be in trouble and in that vein you might have noticed that the Lee Sin did red krugs ganked top lane level 2 and then immediately went to steal the Rek size blue. Because the full red side clear into a gank is becoming quite common, you can use other strategies to force a vertical jungling meta or you can even go in and steal the blue buff and get out. It depends on how you react to the action at hand. But as soon as Rek size shows mid level 3 and then heads down towards the Lee Sin's blue, he knows he needs to go and steal those Rek size blue side camps or Rek size will do the same in kind to the Lee Sin. And that's very important. I talked about having a game plan but at the same time you need to have a dynamic brain. That means if something happens that you didn't expect, you don't freeze and you don't waffle and you aren't unsure of what to do next. You need to immediately make a counter decision to what the enemy jungler is doing because if you don't do that as an early game person or even as a scaling jungler, if you want to win the game fast and early, you cannot afford to give anything away. Obviously in this case, the Rex size bottom lane is pushing up which means she is okay to steal the blue, wait around, take the crab. And when I say camp a lane, when I say repeat and abuse, if you are a pro player, if you are a smurf person from challenger in diamond and plat, What's the biggest thing that really tilts your laners when you have a smurf against you? It's that their ganking is so unrelenting it tilts you even though you're not involved. You get tilted for your laners and of course yourself because you feel out jungled. And if you've ever had an enemy jungler gank so hard that you feel lost, you don't know what to do. Do I go to my camps? Which lane do I gank? That's the kind of pressure you're looking to do. Now of course the Lee Sin here is more than capable, so once the Rexa has ganked again in the mid lane, Lee Sin has done a good job trying to chase down the Talon, but it is a Talon after he gets a 1v1 kill on the top lane, and because he knows Rexa has most likely gone back to base, especially given that the, she was quite lucky not to die from that second gank, that Lee Sin tries to make something happen in the mid lane, but the thing is it is a Syndra, she is quite strong at the moment, she has the range, the long range stun as well, and Twisted Fate is quite far behind. Now while he messes around in the mid lane, they're trying to get something going, the Rexa is is going to the top side to see what cams are available but immediately turns her head towards the top lane. There's a close battle going on, reacts as fast as she can and ends up grabbing a kill and saving her top laner. Again, another gank focusing on that over the farming. This is what we're looking for. And because the Lee Sin was low and had to go back to base, when you want to win games first and early, your pathing needs to be impeccable. You need to have a very good understanding of vision and camp and jungle tracking. In this case, she rotates around the top of the mid lane going through the enemy's jungle, being patient, giving enough time for the Lee Sin to go back, and once again, Twisted Fate has to fall. She waited for the yellow card to be used. If you want a successful gank, you really have to save your spells and watch enemy spells to make sure they're in cooldown, and basically guarantees your success when there is no flash, and the Syndra and Rek'Sai do a very good job here. 
So obviously you have a good idea of how that ganking pressure works into the early game clearing in that you really focus the ganks and you don't worry about the camps too much at all. Now after that third round gank on the mid lane, this is where Rexai can say okay let's shove the wave, Syndra can go back at an item spike and I can find and clear the second spawn of my Raptors and Krugs. This gives her level 6. Now what a lot of junglers in lower MMRs who think hey I did a great job ganking, I'm amazing, pats themselves on the back, high fives the laner, is they don't go back to the mid lane, they think well I've done my job, the laner's ahead, I can do whatever I want now. No, keep that pressure on, you need to essentially destroy a lane beyond recognition, that means you need to get used to using your early game jungling power or your champion's mechanical power if you're a meta jungler to exert that confidence all over the map and that means when lanes are hard pushed in it doesn't indicate that you cannot gank them it just means you need to start tower diving use your ults use your dashes go in between towers help set up lanes to be in that situation get the tower platings fall back to dragons obviously this is much easier if the twisted fate was another champion and it'd say push the syndra back in again well you don't need to do any of this but it's just a point to keep in mind that when you have lanes that are pushing maybe all your lanes are winning for once and you're an early game jungler this is the kind of practice you want to implement into your game now if you have a mid lane or top lane duo if you're in clash this is a very good strategy to use to get yourselves both fed and of course force the enemy team to collapse onto you rexa again in between two towers kills the twisted fate and finally it catches up to her and she ends up falling. However, she can go back to base, well, she didn't have a choice in the matter, she can buy, and now she has such a level lead and an item lead over the enemy team, you can use that to push into the enemy jungle. You can win fights 2v1 very easily. There's no point having this advantage if you're not going to do anything with it, and that's the biggest complaint about people who aren't high MMR, is that when you pick a champion like Rek'Sai, why do we say don't use it if you're gold? It's not insulting your mechanics, I'm sure you could figure it out. It's that the idea of exerting this pressure continuously and when to go next is the biggest problem. You just end up farming away and your lead withers and dies and you lose in the late game. And to that mind you are seeing exactly that. The Rek'Sai literally kills three of them all by herself. So if you're complaining about not having lane prior, well, this solves that problem because you don't need lane prior, you can just take on anyone in the entire map. Now, fall back down, kill the enemy ADC, get some tower platings, maybe your bottom lane can handle that. The key here is now, I'm sure a lot of you have been in this situation, what do you do next? How do you close the game out? And the answer to that is always Rift Herald. And Rift Herald before 14 minutes. Why? Because you want to use it on tower plates. You want to make sure you get them and leave no standing golds on the map. And that's why you'll see a lot of challenge junglers, not the players, the champions, are able to secure those heralds early and often so that they can use them on the tower plates because that is the key to snowballing an early game lead. So that just gives you a little bit of a highlight using, you know, two early game junglers. You can do the same if you win the matchup and you have a scaling jungler, or even if you don't win the matchup, at least you have a strong jungler. Let's just say that. So we will use Talia for this. And again, you see the red side clear, red, Raptors, Krugs, and then immediately looks to gank, bottom lane. If of course they're pushing, and you have some decent CC, that makes it all the more easy for you. But if your lane is pushing, don't be afraid to go get your hands dirty in the tower dive. Here, your Talia, you have CC, you have strong damage. Go and pick up the kill while the enemy Lee Sin is sitting farming his camps. You see the difference in mindset. It's get in the gank as soon as possible at level 3. Get control of the crab. If your mid lane is pushed in, you can go and gank. If you have good lane priority and a good mid laner, go and contest a second crab. And perhaps you pick up a kill on the jungler by collapsing on him. But now that you see the Mordekaiser is very very low. Now instead of going back to her jungle, relaxing, clearing a blue or whatever, you don't want to do that. Chase him down, bug him, force him, delay his back, irritate him, tilt him, get in his head. It's all we want to do here. You want to irritate and tilt and frustrate. To the point the laners are going to swim in a sea of their own inadequacy and probably go and rant on Twitter about it. Now as you see the Talia run into the lease, and I need to highlight the fact that even if you're pathing and your ideas are good and your ganks are good, your execution is doing you know wonders for your team, your mechanical ability needs to be on point. If you miss your stuns, you don't push the lease enough and perhaps you end up dying. A lot of the time junglers complain about, you know, say you engage in a scuttle fight and you die 1v1. I am mid lane, why didn't you rotate? Maybe their mid laner didn't rotate either and you simply missed your spells. So that's why this playstyle, this aggro playstyle, has to be done with a champion you feel confident on or who generally beats most other jungle matchups. Now the Talia again uses great pathing as you saw into the mid lane. She's fighting, she forced the TP out from the Mordekaiser. And obviously, as I talk about that, she misses a flash Q in the LeBlanc, but they try and push tower plates, as I said, always as much as you can, understand the wave balance around pushing tower plates, and watch the behavior from the Mordekai's in the Lee Sin. Does that strike you as mentally elevated and emotionally stable enemy players? No, it reeks of people who are just already tilted from the events of the game. Talia has ignored her whole blue side. She got the blue buff from killing the Lee Sin, so why would she waste hers? 
She basically had that full blue buff for the duration of her activities in the first phase of the game. She can go back to base. Instead of going to the top side and getting level 1 cams, she can head to the bottom side, get her Krugs and Raptors, get the second spawn of the red buff, all rubber banded of course, and now be level 6. Now, as you can see, when you play this way, you're gonna get double invades. The support in the enemy jungle are gonna try and knock you out of the game and tilt you back. And if you're against a farming jungler, a scaling jungler who doesn't have that ability, you're obviously a bit more in the free. But at least, and we'll always try and do this at least once per game, it's the rules. And now Talia ends up falling, so that highlights the importance of, you know, keep in mind what might the enemy jungler do next, keep your vision control down as best you can, but these things do happen. Now, you might think, okay, that's the end of all the pressure, she has to go back to base, she'll go farm a blue side jungle, and I say, well, you know, maybe you would do that, maybe I would do that, but this player says, I'm gonna go and invade and steal the red buff back. The Lee Sin is able to secure, but the sheer amount of pressure and persistence that this Talia is showing against him will completely throw him, and guess what, you go do this in a gold game, you know, where you track the enemy jungle and just invade him with impunity, he's probably gonna rage quit and head to the league sub to complain about how mages are too OP. But again, I shouldn't have to say this, please use your brains. Obviously here, she's fighting a 2v1 between two towers, the Quinn is rotated, she's able to just survive because the Lissandra also rotated. If you don't have this kind of help and you cannot 2v1, don't complain when you die. So only commit to the situation if your laner is showing the inclination to come and help. If she isn't, maybe you can get away with stealing some camps, maybe just shoving them off of their own jungle. That's absolutely fine. You don't have to fully commit to the kills if you do not have the laner support. Please acknowledge this. Also make sure you have the mechanics to pull it off. If you're gonna miss your skill shots, if you're gonna do this as a Rengar, and you end up ulting the baby Krog instead of the Lee Sin, again, it's on you. But between the Rek'Sai and the Talia, you see here the kind of pressure and hopefully the pathing that they're using to gain these advantages early on in the game. It's all about knowing your early route, repeat ganking, invading with impunity, exerting your dominance on the map, making sure your champion can match up well and has the mechanical ability to outplay the enemy, as well as the fact you acknowledge that you might need to rotate around the map to different lanes depending on their lane states and help get those tower plates, help burn those summoners. Ignore your camps sometimes, just go straight in and gank again. But don't forget they exist, yes, Atalia after all the excitement in the top lane, straight back down, clears all her camps, regains that experience, it's just not number one on the list. That's why it's important to sequence your camps correctly, so when you do clear them, you're making sure you optimize and maximize that experience. Now, if the fact that you have suppressed the enemy jungler, ganked every lane, done a few tower dives, maybe you've ganked 18 times in the mid lane, and your laners have a lead such that they're taking towers by themselves, the Rift Herald is basically the way you break open the base and just close out the game or force them to surrender. And I won't sugarcoat it for you. If you have three hard losing lanes and you're trying to do this, you're gonna end up having a situation more like the video I did in June about what happens when all three lanes lose. But as you see from the Talia clips you're watching, forcing those towers, shoving their lanes up, you get these skirmishes as you invade the enemy jungle, as you place down vision. The next step is to siege the lanes, ward the jungle, collapse on anyone that gets out too far. And basically it's your standard macro way to close, it's just you're doing it, you know, about 15 minutes sooner than you would otherwise because of how active you were in that early game. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. You've seen from Rek'Sai, an early game jungler, how to do it. You've seen from Talia, a scaling jungler, how to do it. And yes, it helps if you have strong lanes that can start taking towers by themselves. However, this gives yourself the best opportunity to do so. And if you aren't able to take towers and your laners are shoving in, you can go for those tower dives. The main point is your laners don't have to worry about the enemy jungler ganking because he's too busy dealing with you. The enemy probably can't even 1v1 you at this stage, so their laners are going to have to come and rotate to deal with you, which gives your laners free time on towers and minion waves and so on. It's all about that snowball effect. So in summary, make sure you know your plan for your starting route and which lane you wish to gank. Assess the lanes before you get into the loading screen, who has CC, who might be pushing. Be ready to adapt, don't be afraid to tower dive early. Make sure you repeat gank immediately. You can forego a certain side of your map if it means getting three or four ganks in across the map at the same time. Don't give anything away for free whatsoever. If they invade your red buff, you invade their red buff. Essentially, you are the better jungler and you're just showing them that. And at the end of the day, if you are a better jungler, you're doing this already. Thank you very much for watching. I know this was a bit more loose. I just wanted to introduce some ideas about this kind of repeat pressure that I'm not seeing enough of when I watch VOD reviews of different MMRs. Please do like, share, and comment if you enjoyed it. And consider, of course, subscribing to see more videos just like this one. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.